Hey, hey. Here. Okay. Watch out. Set. Sold. On. The Kerbal Space Program. The pinnacle of Kerbin's technological advancements. The well-known and well-respected organization discovering the wonders of the Kerbal system and engineering and scientific betterments for all Kerbal kind. And so today, they are utilizing complex shuttlecraft to construct orbital space stations and so much more. And yet, so many of these advancements are due to the hard work and determination of four pioneering Kerbonauts. These are the stories of the brave explorers who dared to travel faster and higher than those who preceded them. The trailblazers, the first ones to leave the confines of Kerbin's atmosphere, the first ones to orbit the planet, and yes, even the first ones to set foot on another celestial body. The Kerbals who would defy the Kraken and touch the mud. Officially, the program knew them as Kerbalnaut Group One but most of Kerbin knows them better as the Moho Four. They are the original four. He was the first Kerbal to leave Kerbin's atmosphere and journey into space. His name is Jebediah Kerman. Better known by his nickname, Jeb, he grew up in a rural area on the grasslands. He was the oldest with three younger siblings, and at a very young age, Jeb became interested in flying. At first, he started building model airplanes but he longed for so much more. During his secondary education, he was an average student, but excelled at mathematics. A well-to-do friend of his owned an airplane, and Jeb's friend would take him out on flights and began to teach him the basics of flying. Jeb was also very athletic and enjoyed many different sports. One of his favorites was swimming, but his favorite thing to do, of course, was to fly. The Great Conflict that encompassed all of Kerbin was ongoing during his secondary education. So, as soon as he was able, during his senior year, he joined the Army Air Corps as a cadet. Upon his graduation, he spent several weeks undergoing basic flight training. Jeb longed to fly, but most of the time in the military was spent as a clerk. After the war ended, he was honorably discharged. After getting out of the military, Jeb still wanted to make a career out of being a pilot. He started his post-secondary education with a degree in mechanical engineering. At this time, the Cold War started to heat up. Jeb decided to re-enlist in the military after he graduated from university. He joined the recently formed Air Force and was given more piloting training. This time, after completing his training, he was commissioned as a lieutenant. Not long after graduating flight school, his squadron was deployed to the war zone. There. Jeb flew a Sabre. He was in the theater about half a year and flew 100 combat missions. On multiple occasions, he tangled with enemy mix. During this time, he received a citation for a superlative airmanship as he helped protect a reconnaissance mission. He went on to receive several other high-level medals for his flying. After finishing his 100th mission, Jeb was allowed to go home, but he volunteered to fly another 25 missions. The military, however, denied his request to stay in theater, and he was sent home. So, after returning home, he became an Air Force flight instructor. It was here that Jeb learned that some things are more dangerous than combat missions. While teaching another Kerbal how to fly, the student overstressed the plane, causing one of the ailerons to break off. Jeb was able to recover the situation by managing to climb into the front seat and take control of the aircraft. He managed to safely land the plane, mostly in one piece. After this, he did not remain a flight instructor very long. Instead, he switched over and became a test pilot for the Air Force. But it was not very long after becoming a test pilot that Jeb received top secret orders to report to the newly formed Kerbal Space Center. It was here that he would begin breaking records. As a test pilot for the liquid-fueled rocket plane, Jeb would fly higher and faster than any Kerbal before him. This test flight took him to the edge of space. Actually, during this time, the Kerbal Space Center was very interested in developing space planes. Some at the agency, like Werner von Kerman, thought and believed that space planes and space shuttles were truly the future of the program. For Jebediah, all that mattered was that he was flying. But this 
was just the beginning of Jebediah's career with the KSC. Little did he know, he was one of around only 100 test pilots selected for the Kerbal Space Program's Project MOHO. Only the best of the best would be selected to become Kerbonauts. Competition was fierce. Jebediah easily passed the first rounds of screening, after which he and the rest of the candidates were sent to an Air Force research base for extensive physical and psychological testing. During these tests, he was almost disqualified for having a pollen allergy. But Jebediah was able to convince those conducting the screening that pollen would not be an issue in a sterile capsule. Not long after, Jeb was notified that he had been selected. He made it as one of the first four Kerbonauts, so now began his formal Kerbonaut training along with Bob, Bill, and Valentina. Early on, it was decided that an absolutely fearless pilot who could remain level-headed regardless of the situation, one who could bring a craft home no matter how bleak or hopeless the flight seemed, would be the one to fly the first mission to space. Of the original four, none met these qualifications more than Jebediah. So, he was selected to fly the first suborbital Moho Redstone mission. On the morning of the launch, Jebediah requested a breakfast of snacks, a tradition that has been carried out on every subsequent launch to this day. After a couple hours wait on the pad due to minor delays, it was finally time to launch. All eyes were on this launch. Kerbals from all over the world would tune in on their video devices, and on that clear day, Jebediah again took off into the history books. Jebediah's capsule, named Freedom 7, shot up into the sky. This was only a suborbital mission, so the engines did not burn very long. Yet, Jeb was subject to some fiercely intense G-forces. Once the engines cut off, the launch escape tower was jettisoned, and the capsule separated from the booster. In space, he got the opportunity to test the capsule's reaction control wheels. These would be extremely important going forward as the primary means of controlling a spacecraft's orientation. Virtually all future missions would rely on them. Jeb found that the reaction wheels behaved just like they did in the simulator. However, this time he could not hear them moving with all the other background noises of the real mission. In space, he was able to look out his little window and identify different geographical formations. He was clearly able to see the KSC coastline. The clouds did make it just a little harder to spot things though. And shortly after reaching space, it was time to re-enter Kerbin's atmosphere. He left the capsule automatically correct its orientation. The descent was faster than Jeb expected, but the parachutes opened just like it was supposed to. The landing was about as rough as landing a jet on an aircraft carrier, and the capsule was in such good shape that it probably could have been used again, something that surprised everyone, even Jeb. This is Echo 3, and thanks for joining me to discuss Jebediah Kerman. I'll see you next time.